Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Whiskey Wednesday Show with your hosts, Ken Tizzard and Music for Goats. Brought to you in full color and stereo sound with amplification provided by Trainer. Broadcasting into the world from Storyhouse Studios in Camelford, Ontario, you'll hear the best in old country, folk, Americana, punk rock, and 80s music delivered into your homes every week for free. And don't forget your regular dose of new and original songs from Music for Goats. Never be alone on a Wednesday night again, 8 p.m. Eastern and 9.30 for those even if you Join the Whiskey Wednesday regulars on Facebook to be a part of the conversation, or watch on YouTube as well. Pour a drink, a cup of tea, or a nice cold long tooth. Roll up your best smoke and sit back and relax. Don't forget to hit the share button to help spread the word. The Whiskey Wednesday Show, every week. Cheers. Oh my god. I'm on. I'm on, just like that. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Richard Gertrude, how was Ringo? Ringo was... Uh, Ringo's 83. Two. <laughs> Two. And he was amazing. Uh, the show was fantastic. Um, you know, I know people will hate me for saying it, but like the most interesting parts for me weren't the Ringo parts. But the fact that Ringo put all this together is incredible. And uh, I think that's amazing. Um, you know, what a... What a beautiful man. Um, you know, where else in the world can you get Colin Hay to sing backups on like Africa with by Toto with Steve Lukather playing guitar? I was like, oh my god! And Ringo wasn't even on stage. Um, but yeah, we'll talk some more about that show. It was, in a nutshell, it was awesome. It was great to get out. Nice to go down and see Dave Fisher and uh, Carla and Harvey. Um, Harvey and me spent some time together, hanging out on the floor. He showed me, uh, you know, all of his little toys and cars and how to open the cupboards and. Um, how to walk up behind mom and crawl up her legs, you know, uh, all those things. I haven't spent that much time on the floor since when I fell down last week when I was putting my socks on and I couldn't get up for an hour. Um, but other than that, you know... Well, it is... Um, Steve Dagg, lights look awesome, nice and warm, friendly, inviting. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I'm, I am... Uh, you know, concerned with that, but uh, looking up at the monitor and waving at myself, it, it looks all right. Hope everybody's doing well out there in internet world, which of course is the place that you live. And um, we hope that everybody's doing well. I have to acknowledge the passing of uh, Joyce's sister Maureen today, um, and um, Joyce is Barry's wife, um, and and uh, and Joyce is out in Halifax visiting with her sister who's been ill, and her other sisters, and uh, the brother. Did he get out there, Barry? He did, yeah. So um, the, they were all there. Um, unfortunately, Maureen passed away today. So we dedicate the night to Maureen and Joyce and the family. We've got Barry here with us. We're going to make sure he gets extra helpings of Whiskey Night. We're going to play some tunes for you. He will write the darkest love songs. He will try to make you cry. When he stands upon that stage. Finds a way to hear the pop songs. He'll ride them sideways into tears. He'll drive the chords in places you've never seen. He's been doing this fears. So if you feel like you've been cheated and you don't know where to start. see it from his actions words turn and dampen covered eyes he goes wherever the story's taken he lives the life of liars lies he finds a way to heal the broken he'll draw out their stories raw like blood 
capture every tiny detail The rivers run red through the mud Still he keeps living all your heartaches Night after night he tears apart And he hopes to hear you singing With the king of broken hearts Different endings in one, ladies and gentlemen. I know, I know. You, don't, you got your that's money's worth on that yes, one. They certainly did. I you think. got your money's work on that one, folks. <laughs> Good lord, three different endings. Perfect. They were all right in their own way. Tonight the water is groovy. Um, not that. Um, not that it's you know. I just think I probably smoked too much yesterday. I just sort of started puffing early in the day because Neil was driving. Neil opted to drive, which was really nice. Um, and as, as graceful and, and pleasant as it is to, um, to accept the offer, I also know that it's because he hates my driving. I, I actually drive him fucking crazy on the highway. Pretty much. Yeah, Pretty he, much. Uh, he's a very scared passenger when I'm behind the wheel. And not because I'm going too fast, just because I'm driving terribly. Um, but uh, you know, I've come to understand that because of that, Neil takes over the driving, which is great. It allows me to smoke too much weed during the day when I'm hanging out with David Fisher. It was lovely to see David, and oh my goodness, that soup that um, that she cooked, the carlin. What what was it again? It was like a chicken noodle soup, but it was a chicken dumpling, but it had like some coconut milk in it, and probably some kale or something. Yeah. It's just beautiful, just beautiful. And the way she got the chicken all stringy in it. It's just so damn good, just so damn good. Yeah, my brother offered to marry her. <laughs> well, I almost did too, you know. Are you getting enough of the uh, guitar here, Barry? It's quite low over here, but uh, I'm okay with that because it allows me to hear the acoustic. Hello, Aunt Betty, how are you doing? With the 20th century still in bloom In fair conception bay The world turned round and men were bound All for the USA All for the USA Onto the streets of a New York town They poured like morning tides To raise the concrete and the steel Up to the New York sky up to your sky Can you read and write? Can you drink and fight? Can you take the nights alone? You can make a life for a child and a wife While you're far away from home I'll Far away from home of a chancy girl She'll free you from the cold She'll lend a tender or loving ear to every story told to every story told Have you got the hands? Have you got the heart? Have you got the cold steel nerve? You can rent the roar on New York floor You'll get what you deserve You'll get what you deserve 
Cause them who freeze and them who fall mm, Crawl home in dismay And curse the hand of God above They'll get right down and pray They'll break right down and pray century still in bloom in fair conception bay oh the world turned round and men were bound all for the usa all for the usa little ron horn hines to ease into the evening with y'all Ah, it's so exciting to be in the new studio tonight. We can actually walk through without tripping over everything. I got a little video showing you the new setup. We're going to get to that in a minute, so I'm not going to explain too much of it now, but it's pretty darn awesome. I'm pretty darn intelligent. I can't believe I got all these things plugged in together and everything works. I, can't, I, was, I was saying the, sort of the, the, the extent of it, like, you know, you, you write your songs, you find out what type of music you like, you, you spend years developing a style based on your influences and how strong your personality is. And then you uh, introduce other musicians into it, and it changes, and it folds, and it changes, and it folds, and then eventually it slips into something that's really comfortable. And then that project, you know, of people take, on average, you know, a year. You can do it shorter if you all get in a van and go play every night of the week. You can probably do it in like, you know, 200 shows. So it'll be like eight or nine months if you play every night. Oh, you get to get out of the van, you mean? You get to get out of the van oh, just okay. to play the shows. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't get out to pee. You get empty Gatorade oh, of bottles. So. Of course not. Um, and they, uh, they get disposed of uh, properly. Uh, but then the band takes a year or two to learn the repertoire and figure out what instruments work. Well, get in tune. It's like three or four years. Yeah. Well, you know, um, COVID and I was away for a year. Steve's been sick with cancer for a year. Um, we had a whole bunch of shit going on. I think we did pretty good in, in terms of forming something new in a time where, you know, nothing new was really happening. Um, we did pretty damn good. And then we figure out that, you know, oh, we can't go on tour and stuff because... Do you keep that thing? Because Ken's a terrible driver. Because Ken's a terrible driver. Sure. can't possibly go on tour. And um, so you don't. And you think, well, how are we going to play for people? How are we going to play for people? <clears throat> and then we realize that the air that we breathe around us actually conducts video and audio waves in some way, shape, or form. At least it allows them to pass through nicely. Maybe that's what it is. So we end up playing for a whole array of telephones. I know. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, we are, we, are, we are now playing to our telephone overlords. <laughs> <laughs> We're now doing concerts for the phones. That's hysterical. That's a, we used to use the phones to watch concerts. Now we are performing for them. Well, either way, I know that you're out there, um, and I can see by the messages that pop up. I just got to change the message place, so I'm not looking on the floor. But it's lovely to see everybody. Uh, please chime in. Tell us where you're, um, where you're, uh, where you're listening and watching from, and what you're drinking and what you're doing and all that stuff. Uh, and also on your, if you're on uh, YouTube or um, Facebook. Uh, just in the bottom of this post, you'll think, see a thing that says share. If you hit that, this post then shows up on your news feed and all your friends get notifications that you're watching. And some of them might join in and say hi, check it out, see what it's all about. And that would be an amazing way to, uh, you know, show people about the music. This is a song called Old Dog. Seems like every meal he's ever eaten has come at the cost of a song. Not to say he ain't been hungry For those times you sang along And his house is made from many doors The address changes day by day Been wrapping around this world Killing time along the way It's a long way to travel And a dollar for a song But another town behind And another comes along His boots are feeling heavy Standing on Stage fire in his bloodshot eyes again today. And for every girl who's ever loved 
to his kindness helped him find his way through falling, tumbling, lonely nights to bring colors to the grave. Another lonesome sunrise just ahead. His clothes are on the bed and he's sprawled across the floor. And he's hidden for the door. He's a long way to travel in a dark for us. Put another town behind and another comes along. His boots are feeling heavy standing on another stage. Five his bloodshot eyes. Again the day. You were breaking from this road. So much story to stay Just pull the old truck over, roll him off beside the road. For his life's been filled with many riches found upon this stage. When he gets his call to glory, and he knows his dues are paid, it's a long way to heaven and a dollar for a song. But now the town behind and another comes along. His boots are feeling heavy standing on the stage, fire in his bloodshot eyes. Again today You are breaking from this road So my story is still untold Does it matter what you say He's been there all his days He's an old dog and you'll never You are breaking from this road So my story is still untold Does it matter I borrowed some of those looks from Steve Lukather last night. Yeah. Um, actually, no, they would be more more akin with uh, Colin Hayes' style of playing. Although Steve Lukather was amazing, it's just kind of like it's like the Ian Thornley thing. It's just like a million precise notes a second, just like up and down and into this. I, mean, I don't even have that much neck on my guitar. Well, I probably do, but you can't get to it and do the stuff that he was doing. Just these crazy sort of triplet patterns, just beautiful stuff. Also, a lot of uh, really nice, I love his soaring tone. Like, this is when he hits that note. Like, and it's just like, you can listen on note for you know, 40 seconds. It's like, this is fucking great. You know, it's just a sustained, bendy note. Um, but he had, like, the, the triple Bogner set up, three Bogner 410s, and uh, I think there was two heads on top. Um, that's what you said in the current way home. I think that's what it was. And then the bass player had two 810s. No, one eight ten laid. Yeah. No, two eight ten laid sideways with uh, with three heads oh, on yeah. top. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, uh, two one for each, and then I guess a backup. And then Colin Hay had like a, a little a little array of tiny miniature, looked like sort of thirty. Like I mean, they they were probably sort of originally small water jams, but they looked like the old Gibson ones. They were kind of brown and they had those sort of rounded covers on them, and not really much. You know, all the dials were in the back. And it looked like he was playing into a bunch of those, and fuck, did they ever sound nice? Um, Ringo played guitar as well. I can't remember what he played. Ringo played guitar? He did not play guitar. He didn't he in the first drums. songs? I don't <laughs> think so. In the first song, didn't he come out with a guitar? No. No, he came mm. out with a microphone, but he's small enough that you know, a large mic size. could look like a guitar, I guess. But. Okay. Well, you know. You I, know what amazed me? For 82 years old, there wasn't a single gray hair anywhere on his head. 
I know. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, that, 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 I mean, it was. And dark. I don't mean he was, you know, like bald. No, no, it was I mean, a head. It was a good, solid head of hair he's got. It was. It was just yeah. black as beard and all. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. he's got some. It's um, incredible. He's um, he's got yeah. those things. Um, okay, so um, the guest tonight is the studio, um, and I'm going to talk about this. Um, just give you a little sort of update on what we've been doing, and um, you know, when I started the show, you all know. Um, before we do that video, Barry, we'll probably throw that photo up uh, just so you know we're getting ready for that. I'll show that first. Um, so what we've been doing is, um, you know, it started with me and an iPhone on the couch. I had an extra old iPhone. Uh, and then it was me and uh, an iPhone with a mic and a and a, a, the uh, mini little um, IK Media, um, what was that thing called? The iRig. iRig Duo Pro had two inserts on it so I could plug in two mics. So I'd plug in my close mic here and I'd put a mic in the room, in the back of the room and run it through a reverb unit and plug it into it and mix the two of them together. So when I was singing, the reverb pick, would pick up and then when I wasn't singing, the reverb wouldn't pick up. All these little tricks of trying to get it to be really simple and cheap. And then I had another phone and then I subscribed to Switcher, which allowed me to do two phones back and forth. And then the band started coming in and doing some stuff and then we had three phones. and. And then I wanted to go to other platforms, so we started going to Twitch and all these things. Anyways, it's turned into a three-year journey of um, a, a great time of undering, understanding the audiovisual production that goes into live streaming from a very simple to a very complex way. And um, you guys contribute. You guys, I, for the first six months I was doing this, there was no tip jar. And um, I, it was during the beginning of lockdown and stuff, and it was like, no, no, this people need this. I need it. Let's just do it. And then after six months, there was a lot of people who requested the tip jar. I thought, well, you know something, there's nothing wrong with it. And I was looking to get a new microphone or something, I think, at the time. And I thought, sure. And I put up the tip jar, and it generated a little bit of money. I went, huh, that, that actually helped get the microphone. So what I'm going to show you now is a graphic that I did today. This is where we've been, um, or sort of what we're using now, uh, what we just added, and what we're hoping to add over the next couple of years, uh, just so you guys can see how your support has been really helping out. Uh, on the far left, you'll see the audio stuff. Um, we've got the, the mixing board that we use. Uh, that's the uh, Task MM24. It's a great thing. That costs 1500 bucks. There's It's actually like 1299 or something. Once you include taxes and driving and gas and all that, it's going to be 15 um, That's the Slate ML1s. Uh, I have two of those, which are actually in the studio tonight because uh, I'm using them to record the drums. I got two of those. They're 1000 bucks each. Great microphones. Um, I have that art uh, voice channel. I think that's about 500 bucks. And then a couple of bits and pieces that I needed was I needed four of those IK Media clips, which are like 79 bucks each, which is kind of ridiculous. But anyways, I got four of those. And these little adapters for doing the HDMI conversions, which you'll see in the video, um, you know, that's the price of them. And that's all stuff that I had, I had accumulated uh, that I paid for and your contributions as well help pay for. Um, the stuff that I just got, um, I, I, over the last uh, sort of 10 months or so, there's a thousand bucks in the account um, that uh, you guys contribute to. So I took that and I put it towards getting um, a new switcher, the lighting system, and the hard drive, uh, the SS drive. So you can see that was another you know, 2,600 bucks or something of which you guys helped out pay for the you know, half of it. Uh, what I want to eventually get to here in the studio is I want to have two of these Blackmagic cameras and two of the uh, mobilized um, uh, little gizmo-y things there. It's uh, it's it's called a, a jib one. It's a jib. It's a motorized jib arm. So the two of those will be able to do the entire show with panning and zooming and all this stuff. And everything that we bought so far is going to coordinate with that so that, um, you know, Barry can control it all from where he is. Uh, it's an exciting place to be. I don't expect to get there soon. Uh, you know, half of that I think is about three grand or 3,300. It'll get me one camera and a jib so we can get started there. And, um, I just want to let you guys know where we're going. But now, without any further ado, for those of you who know, want to know how we are doing this, um, Barry has a little video that I shot earlier today after I got all this set up, and this is going to be for Barry's first time switching to video. So let's see it, Barry. Come on, man. You can do this. I can. <laughs> yeah. Hey, folks. Welcome to the new Whiskey Wednesday studio. The killer mic's back. Um, this is how it starts. A chair and a guitar and one mic. Uh, and it uh, has built from there. Um, give you a little overview here of what we've got going on. Give you a little run around the studio. So, <clears throat> we have taken great strides to get this all working. Uh, and I'm going to give you a quick run through of it here. This is the board. This is the Tascam M24. It's a lovely board. 
Uh, it's great for doing live shows. It's got um, an analog compressor and EQ section, uh, which is really nice. But it does have this little hard drive built in over here so you can record all your tracks simultaneously, then export them or mix them in this if you want to. So what we do is we have uh, six channels of audio going in here, which is not a lot. And what we've done with the mics for the most part, we're going with a sort of a more of a far mic view um, rather than close miking, you know, the the vocal mic is a good sort of foot to two feet away from me. The same with the guys um, with those two mics there. I use this for the uh, banjo uh, just because it's a, I can move that a little closer. And from here I have access to all of these mics to drag them a little closer to me if I want a more close thing. I can even just use my foot to push them out when I'm not using them. The beauty of this setup is that it can, does keep a nice clear walk space here for the musicians. Um, as you can see, we are in our front office or the library of the house. This is where our washer and dryer is, but in the, the only scene that shows the washer and dryer is one that shows um, a reflection. Uh, and there you go. And when you see the reflection, you just see the flag. So we've been careful to cover the angle so that you don't know that we're in the laundry room, but now I've, I've gotten rid of that secret. We have kept one square right here. That is where the long tooth logger keg is going to go. Other than that, everything is where it is. We've got Neil's position with his guitar. We've got an amp for him there when he needs to plug in. Uh, I'm here with my guitar, two guitars, electric and acoustic. The trainer is going into uh, just a 57 there into the board. Mr. Grant is, is using this amazing trainer amp. Um, which has a DI out on it. It's a six inch speaker. Uh, the small block 106 is one of my favorite guitar amps uh, for, well, tiny bass amps. And we're using the gold tone uh, band guitar as well. So that's the instruments we're using. Mics are pretty standard. There's an Apex, a Rode, uh, this Lewitt I love, an SM57. I'll probably bring down some of my uh, more high end mics, but right now they're being used to record some drums. So uh, this is the book taste, which contains my youth some stuff around. So all of that comes over here into the Tascam M24, which is a lovely unit. Um, out of the Tascam M24, it gets mixed. Now this is where it gets interesting. How do you get that sound out to the internet? And how do you get the video out to the internet? Well, you take your mix from here, using your headphones out, go into mic in on the ATEM Extreme. Now this is the newest piece of hardware that we've got. This is called the ATEM, the ATEM Mini Extreme. This gives you eight channels through the back here of HDMI inputs. What I have done is I've taken each of our old cell phones. You can see I've got a bunch of them around the room and I've framed them for every, every person. So let's go back a little bit. The ATEM has a HDMI out which goes to this television. And as you can see there, you can see all six of the cameras um, the statuses of recording and broadcasting. Up in the top right, you can see the program. So as I press buttons here, these uh, buttons here, it goes from uh, each camera. And the top right, where the cameras are changing, if I put it on program view, you'll see the whole thing. And then we can go from camera to camera, put in an automatic fade so that it's a little smoother in the transitions. And what you see on the screen above there, which is what Barry is watching, that is what will be broadcast. So we have eight inputs of HDMI going in here, of which I'm using six. Those HDMI inputs are coming from cell phones using Filmic Pro, which is a really nice uh, piece of film software. It gives you lots of control over the uh, uh, balances and stuff pretty easily, which the Apple camera does not. It also has a HDMI clean output built into the software. So you can use one of these dongles keep your phone charged while sending an HDMI output. And the HDMI output, sorry, we just had a glitch there. Um, Allison got a message on her phone, which I'm using because my phone is up there and it, it stopped the recording. So we're recording again. So you take your iPhone, you can have up to eight of them and you plug it into this little dongle here, splits it to HDMI and sends it power. So you don't need to worry about it going out. And then it comes over to here and you do your switching from there. Pretty straightforward. Uh, your audio comes out from your iPhones and plugs into this as well. 
and you can control your audio. It's on mic one, you can turn it off or on. So if Barry needs to mute the band when we're playing a video, he just turns it off uh, if he wants to be on while we're playing. And you can adjust the volumes up and down through there. There is a proprietary software, which I will open now so you can see what that looks like too. It's amazing. Um, you've got switcher controls in here, and then you've got your media bank controls in there, your audio, uh, so you can see which channels are running in audio and which ones aren't through your HDMI. And then you've got your camera controls if you happen to be using a Blackmagic camera, which is amazing as well. So we've got our audio mixed. It comes into here nice and clean. Remember to check your gain stages all the way. Um, the headphone out is pretty hot, so you might want to, like over here, I had to bring the mic um, gain down uh, by about, uh, what, did I, what does it say, by about almost 30 dB to get it to sort of fit, sit at a, a nice level. So that's good there. And then you've got your, your changes over there as well. Pretty straightforward when you're on a record, uh, you just hit record. I am recording to a, look at this thing. This is the new Juggler, uh, the Delkin Juggler. Um, this is a one terabyte drive. It is the fastest thing I've ever seen. Uh, it plugs in, it records hours and hours and hours of video. Uh, so you press record and that records whatever's coming through the camera directly to you. You hit on air and it'll broadcast directly to the internet. I did have to reach out to Eastlink and get them to come put a new box down here, which I plugged in. Uh, via Ethernet cable, blah blah blah. I know this is a lot of boring stuff. For those of you interested, though, it makes a lot of it's it's a pretty pretty impressive thing because it took a lot of figuring out to get this gear together. Thanks to um, the folks at uh, AV Shop Canada, um, Kevin Snow helped me out with all this stuff. So we've got the M24 going into the A10 Mini. We have all of these cameras going into it. One of the things that um, the A10 Mini can't do is playback videos. A lot of people get a video, dedicated video player. What I have done is I've taken my oldest cell phone, I put the three videos on it, um, the intro, the uh, begging for money, and the outro video. And if I put, I've got that plugged into channel eight. So if I put it on channel eight, you'll see that it comes up on the screen there. Uh, and as soon as I play a video, boom, the video starts playing. And, um, no, that's not a video, sorry, here we go. Boom, the video starts playing and the audio is going in as well. So uh, there's the way that the video switching works on this. Again, it's just an old cell phone plugged into an HDMI um, and into one of the channels. So you can save yourself a ton of money on buying one of those, you know, sort of um, stream decky type things that you fill with media and play it back if you've got another cell phone. So, I mean, that's kind of it. Um, no, it's not, hold on a sec. Let me just make sure I've covered everything. Um, the, you don't need the software to control the ATEM. It can control all of itself, but the software does help to make its tweaking. Um, and of course, I'm running the uh, ART voice channel. I've got my mic, uh, my main mic plugged into that. I find this to be a really nice tool as well. So let's just take a look at some lighting here. Um, I bought these I can uh, not my uh, lights, uh, two little lighting uh, things that they're on very low. Um, there's just the two of them here. And when I mix them with a little fill from a blue or a red, come on, oh, I just have that one unplugged. Uh, blue or red light filling in on the side a little bit. These are beautiful lamps. Um, they are uh, fairly inexpensive. It is the ICANN brand, recommended again by Kevin at uh, AV Works. Um, so when you're sitting here, you see, it's still pretty nice. There are cameras around, but they're small, they're tiny, they're not invasive. Um, it's a it's a really nice place to sit to play music. It's fairly roomy, which is also really good. We got some basic lighting in here, which isn't blinding. We've got the TV monitor, and then we've got all of the flowers and plants and other stuff around. I think I've covered most of my uh, issues here. Um, these little dongles here, you can get them from Apple. I think with tax, they're about a hundred bucks. I got them on eBay, uh, three for seventy five. They do get a little hot. I'm not sure how long they're gonna last, but I'm gonna try them out for a while because you know, we, I do need six or seven of them here. Um, again, these clamps are the iRig, um, the clamp for the uh, from the IK Media. They work really well. You can put your phones on mic stands or whatever you want, or you can buy a dedicated little stand like this one here, which is pretty cheap, or a little desk stand like that one there, which I use for needles. One of the important things, one of the hardest things to do is cable management. As you can see, I've spent a lot of time getting the cables so that on the floor, there's just the one cable going from my amp and the one cable going from the, uh, the uh, ATEM over to the TV monitor. Those cables get wrapped and put away when there's no show happening. 
so it keeps this place clear and clean. Um, this is the, the cable table. This is where I do all my power from. It's a lot of power to come out of one source, um, and splitting it all up is uh, pretty, pretty important. Now, as I said, these little dongles and stuff gets hot, and these phones actually run quite hot because of their, because uh, they're doing so much processing. So I like to have everything. At the end of the night when I come in, I have all this set up, all these powers. One switch turns off everything that might overheat. My dad was a fireman and I grew up uh, unplugging everything in the house. I can't do that anymore, but I do have the one switch. And on specifically high OCD days, I actually unplug this one bar right there from the other one. And that way nothing in the room is plugged in. I have one extension cord back here that has two things plugged into it. Controls my guitar amp, Mr. Grant, and these lights up here. And then over here, I have one power bar that I can turn off. So at the end of the night, when it's time to shut down, there's one turn off there, one unplug there, one turn off there, and there is no power going to anything. There you go, Dad. It's all safe. Anyways, welcome to the new studio. I hope you enjoy the new broadcast. We are tweaking information as we go and tweaking, um, you know, lighting and all that stuff. But this gives you an idea of what we're working with. The ATEM Mini Extreme. Uh, eight channels of HDMI input, fully switchable. You can use your iPhone cameras. Uh, I will eventually move up to Blackmagic cameras so I can get some movement and stuff going. Uh, any type of mixer will do. <clears throat> we are using the Model 24, as I said. Anyways, folks, I hope that's uh, all good. And, uh, of course, we keep this giant 810 here because when we're playing really quietly, it's nice for Mr. Grant to shake the room. Uh, just kidding. No, we don't use that. That's my touring rig. Uh, oh, and I have one camera back here for the wide shot as well. So from up here, you get a nice wide shot of the room. I hope you all have enjoyed this. Uh, welcome to the Whiskey Wednesday News Studio. Cheers. Hmm. Oh, I gotta do that now. That's my fault. There we go. Yo. There we go. We bring that playback in here so I can watch what we're what you guys are watching out there now. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Wow, what a great looking great. studio. I'm really I'm really pleased with that. <laughs> I'm really pleased with that. Nice studio. Yeah. Um, Ken's drinking water tonight. No, no, no. Ken is, is mixing his water um, with uh, <laughs> copious amounts of alcohol. <laughs> but yes, it is there to uh, quench my thirst because it's, uh, it's been a thirsty day. You know, the, after one of those days where you kind of dry your body out, you know, it's, uh, it's like being next to a smoker for 10 hours, you know, it's just like everything gets dry. But you can always quench that dryness with some long tooth lager. It's wet. Long tooth lager, you say. Wow. Long tooth lager. It's <clears throat> wet. Yeah. Um, thanks for the comments on the on the video for um, for what the studio is all about. Yeah, it's a um, it's been quite a journey, and um, you know um, we will have a, a, a real professional thing here that we can continue to do this for you know, as long as we want. You know, we're here playing music, anyways. Might as, Might, well as well. Might as well put on a tie. Might as well. This is a new song. I don't want to hear about your new sensation. I don't want to reconnect my old relations. I don't want to hear your frustrations all the time. It doesn't take a genius to see that she's a girl. It doesn't take a genius to rule a broken world. Your door, and sometimes it's okay to clean dirty floors. Just remember to wash your hands all the time. There's no sense in asking.
song to play this evening. I'm in a great mood, folks. I'm in a great mood. Thanks for hanging in the last, uh, <sighs> man, about six weeks ago, I was so down. I was so down. And about a month ago, I hit my sort of, you know, the one of the sort of yearly lows that I kind of monitor every year. You know, that was when I was so tired. I, was just, I could hardly pick my hands up to do things. It was just like everything was felt like gravity was heavier. Um, and um, I know I talked about it a lot uh, on the show uh, every week, and uh, you guys had to put up with the, the brunt of the moodiness and the, you know, all the bullshit that comes with uh, with okay. people dealing with this type of stuff. Oh, I know you're used to it. You have to be fucking used to it by now. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Fortunately, I'm never moody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just a ray of sunshine. Exactly. Um, no, it's been, it's been uh, you know, I'm used to these ups and downs. That's mostly why I stay by myself. Allison's completely used to it, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, now that I've, you guys have gotten to know me enough, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to go through that and do it with you guys and do it, you know, in front of all you freaks as well. Watch me have a fucking mental breakdown. Um, no, it's, uh, it's been great, but I feel great today. You know, it could be the music last night. Um, I don't know. Uh, live music does sort of cleanse my um, emotional palate, which is nice, so... Uh, maybe it, maybe it was like Ringo. A really good drummer. <laughs> <laughs> we had there were like three of them playing at one time last night, and they were all really good. Oh my like god! One of them was Ringo Starr. One of them was Ringo Starr. Yeah. I know. And and one of them was Edgar of... Winter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Oh, fuck Edgar Winter. Oh, man. And Greg Bissonnet, right? Yeah. 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 Oh. It just like so, these drummers are. You know, I mean, um, you know, when they broke into Rosanna, it was just like. Oh my god. Does that sound like a GDM? Yeah, I'm sure it does. Um, that's pretty good. Yeah, the um, yeah, what a show. And maybe that's maybe that's what maybe that's what's got me uh, got me all going here tonight. I don't know. <laughs> Either way. Uh, I'm feeling great. Um, how are you feeling, Mr. Grant? I feel great as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you enjoy the concert last night? I did. Yeah. I did. I looked over. At one point, you were clapping, and, and you actually shouted out like "yeah" or something. And I went, well, "What was cat. that?" I Mr. Grant just well. called out. Yeah, it was a cat call from Mr. Grant. The first time I've ever heard you do that, <laughs> and it wasn't after a Ringo song. It was after a, I think it was after a song the bass player sang. So it would have been one of Hamish hey, yeah. Stewart. Hamish Stewart. Yeah. Oh my God. Average yeah. white band. Yeah. yeah. From what I could tell, he was playing with a pick. Uh, playing all these crazy funk lines. Uh, that one song, One More Cup Of or something? Or uh, fill, fill the Cup? No, fill the cup or cut my cake or cake my cup. Or yeah, oh, cut my cake. cake. Cut, cut my cake. Yeah. I, I, I remember saying we got to remember the name because of the fucking <laughs> unbelievable bass line. Um, and like in a stadium, like, you know, it was like, it, it was amazing that it was cutting through and just racking it with the pick so fucking hard great great tone one of the best tones i've heard in the stadium it's ever. called cut the cake cut the cake that's the song yeah there we go. yeah it was amazing ah fill the cup that's a different uh, different song altogether <laughs> He looks more like you every day. Oh, 
you come back, come back, my darling. Each night I pray, oh baby, won't you come back to the green mountains with me? See a car winding up the driveway, up to your parents' place. Your old man looks up from his raking As the color drains from your mom's face She's crying softly by the window now While your daddy shakes the soldier's hands Tail lights disappear into the woods below He's frozen in the doorway where he stands Twilight in the silent snow. I hear you singing in my ear. Won't you come back, come back, my darling? You should not pray for me. Won't you come back to the green mountain? Seasons come and seasons go We live from day to day I lose a little bit of myself With each tear I wipe away People on the street used to stop and chat Tony Arkell, if Whiskey Wednesday was all week, I'd be a lot happier. Yeah, I know, me too, me okay. too. And you know, there may come a point where sort of other activities outside of the house might become completely null and void, in which time I'm going to start doing this more on different nights, specified for different platforms with whoever wants to be here, you know, hmm. um, which means I'll probably be doing a lot of it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, pay is the same. Don't be so negative. Yeah, no, no, I know. I, I, uh, know. But I you know it's, this is something, uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. Maybe this is part of the new future. We're going to have Chad Richardson on the show coming up. Uh, and maybe this is part of the metaverse. I don't know. I'm not sure what this metaverse thing is. I, I kind of have an idea about it. It's sort of about living online. While kind of like, I used to think, it's funny, when I was a kid, I used to think, maybe we're not real. Maybe I'm just one cell somewhere with a vivid imagination and all this is just created around me. And I thought, no, well, maybe there's a bunch of cells and we're all having these visions and they're all sort of you know, overlapping. And this metaverse kind of could be like that. Like we, if we all just sort of stop, like you just need to be, have food brought to you. You could sit permanently on a toilet, like kind of attached. And you could sort of be tuned into the metaverse where you could live. And you could even, you know, like the, now they've got into this sort of VR interaction stuff, you know, which of course includes pornography. I thought of it first, like fucking 91, I had the idea. If you wore a suit and then you watched a video and you felt what you saw in the video, that's what the internet is going to be used for. And nobody bought it, but now it's just fucking huge, right? You know. But anyways, you could also have handshakes with people and interact with people, and in in, you know, you could go shopping instead of going to instead of going to Amazon and just clicking purchase. You could put on your VR suit and walk into Amazon while you're sitting at home and go, oh, I like this one. Oh, this one might be better. Oh, this one's on sale. And then you take it, and then it shows up at your door nine hours later or whatever. We're not far off of that. Uh, 
Uh, and who knows? We're getting prepared for the metaverse here. And as I mentioned, Chad Richardson. Chad is a friend of mine from Newfoundland. I've played music with him. Um, we've been friends. We've gotten drunk together. We've cried together. We've laughed together. He's one of those cats. Um, he's been in L.A. for the last 30 years. Uh, maybe not that long. He was in New York for a long time when he got to hang out with, like, David Bowie and stuff. And anyways, he's had a great story and a great life, and he's a really cool cat, and he's doing stuff now that I don't understand. He's doing NFTs with artists, and, um, and it's all about... Um, minting NFTs and, and the metaverse and I don't know maybe I'm part of it already because of all this but I don't know so um, if so welcome to the metaverse and in the metaverse we are available 90 70 to 90 minutes a week currently I think <clears throat> when we were on that kind of speculation it was more like well you know what man you know what if maybe we're you know just all really, really like we all our galaxy fixed on the head of a pin man and somebody yeah, else is you know giant humongous world it could very well be it could very well be i mean you know who's to say right well i mean i guess i guess some things can be proven I, yesterday i was talking to neil as we were driving to kingston and i had an idea uh, for um it suddenly occurred to me I, I was looking at the road we were going downhill and i and i was thinking about how I remember driving with Brian Murphy. No, sir. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sorry. That's okay. We're okay. all good. Stanley, are you all right? Holy shit. Worried about Stanley more than anything. Okay. Everybody okay, calm buddy? down. Um, oh, boy. Thank you, Stanley. Are you okay, buddy? You didn't get hit, did you? Stan's like, that's enough of that. Um, I was just saying, I was driving down a hill with Brian Murphy. Well, we were doing the night drive. Um, we were doing the night drive through uh, Rogers Pass. And, um, did my name just get changed to Brian Murphy? No, I was driving with Brian Murphy. Okay, you were driving downhill with me, just now. No, I was driving downhill with Brian Murphy. I'll get to your part of the story in a minute. <laughs> I know, you're coming, you're, you're still in it, don't worry. We still got you in it. No, I was kind of hoping I wouldn't be. Uh, no, no, you're definitely in it. But I was driving down a hill with Brian, we were doing the, you know, the, up, I think it was just outside of, um, I uh, can't remember, I can't remember the name, but. Um, I couldn't, I had smoked a big joint before the drive. We left at like three in the morning. We had to be in to do the Vicky Gabbro show in Vancouver the next morning. So we're like doing the night pass in the vans and I'm with Brian and um, Brian Murphy. And I realized I couldn't tell if we were going uphill or downhill because of the inertia of the car, gravity changes. And because it was dark, all I could see was disappearing lines off in a straight perspective that would go around a curve. And I started, I started getting freaked out because I was like, are we going up a hill? Are we going flat? Are we going down? And you do it sometime when you're driving. It really freaks you out. So yesterday, when we were driving out to Kingston, we hit a section of the highway. And I had had an edible before I left, so I was feeling a little contemplative about things. Um, I'm going to borrow that tuner when you're done, if that's OK. And then um, okay. I started thinking, I can't tell if we're going up or down the hill right now. That's interesting. I haven't done that in a while. And we're going to Kingston, which is where Brian Murphy is now. So there was a lot of interesting things that, that sort of came out of it. But the good and goodbye is in uh, A, right? Not B flat? Am I correct? Is that I don't think so. I was thinking, maybe it was the shape of the road, I don't know. But I was thinking, like, what if... How much inertia does it take to shoot something into space? Like to get past gravity, where it would just keep going, floating endlessly. Because yeah. as I understand it, like you know, from those movies, like if you fall out of a spaceship and you don't turn into a piece of ice immediately, if you're in a containment suit mm -hmm. of some sort, and say that you kick a soccer ball, the inertia will send you one way and the soccer ball the other, but you will keep going indefinitely. So I thought, what if we, is there a way for us to shoot like our toxic, radioactive waste material from the Earth yeah. into space, and it would just keep going and space is infinite so like it what's the big deal it's a really one centered way of looking at the universe of course and of course neil pointed that out like i mean that that's the typical human thing you know like let's destroy the universe um and it, and it totally makes sense but it for a minute i was just like i think i've saved like i think i've just come up with something because if we could just shoot our garbage into space i don't well, know i think they thought of that in the 70s i read it oh did the they yeah. yeah but they only got it in the atmosphere in space and then you know it's not really a responsible thing to do. But if you get it past the atmosphere, won't it just keep going? Now you know why I There's drive, still Allison. Gravity. <laughs> There's still gravity. <laughs> you know something? It's so funny, because after about six minutes of explaining this to Neil how it was going to work, I thought, and then, 
And then I said, hold on, there's gravity on other planets and suns and stars. And he went, yes, it, we would be sending our garbage somewhere else. And I went, okay, well, that's not cool. So I'm just saying, we have to deal with garbage issue. Please recycle responsibly, um, you know, all of that stuff. Um, <laughs> good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Debbie Parson, good to see you down there. Steve Runyon, it's nice to see you, my, my friend. Um, yeah, uh, Steve Runyon's, man, it's a, it's a new world out there with the edibles. It's totally um, controllable. <laughs> What's next on the list there? Oh, I see it now, good and goodbye. I don't quite know why I still have the guitar, this guitar on, but I'll play it on this guitar. Um, good and goodbye is a song for the new, uh, gonna be on the new record. The new record is in the works. Oh, the furnace. We gotta remember that, Barry. I just heard it click off. Uh, what am I doing? Sorry. Okay. I don't know, I'm, I'm confused. Huh. It's that time of the night. Don't give me that look. <laughs> Which look would you like? Ah, oh, shit. Why did I just pass you my tape capo after I tuned up after I putting the no capo idea. on? I have no idea. Do you want the tuner back? No, no, no. It's, it's going to be in tune now. It's the way sure capos work. <laughs> You don't love me no more, baby. You don't love me no more, my sweet baby. Oh, you don't love me no more. Each night I try to see the truth behind your eyes, but I just don't see the good. So good. thing I'm seeing dark ink on the on the uh, set list I now have to tape my set list way over on the table and my glasses aren't what they used to be but it looks like FM and O and pain free living yes but it I does. Got, why do I have banjo written down for that yeah. I'm not playing that on the banjo mm -hmm. it seems strange that would be a strange choice to play on the banjo yeah no I'm not doing it on the banjo um, I'm gonna go back over to the Gretsch which uh, I am so sorry there honey I uh, didn't mean to drop you on the Stanley's spine like that. How are you feeling? You feeling all right? You feeling all right? Okay. Um, it's played in this key. Um, I had some things to talk about. I um, 
To be honest, I'm um, not that I'm, I'm I'm not sort of ready to talk about it a lot or anything because I'm really not. But um, I just you know finding out today about Joyce's sister has got us all a little reeling here. Um, Barry, I'm glad you're here with us. Um, you know, I, I wish you were there with them, but uh, if you're, for, I'm glad you're not home alone. Um, and that's cool. Um, it's nice to have you here for that. Um, I, um, it is a sad thing when we lose a sibling. This is a song, uh, well, I'll send this one out to Joyce tonight and all the sisters and the brother and to Mo. Uh, I don't know if they're all drug smokers or not. Well then, this is a song that gets me through. This is, uh, we, all deal with, we all deal with pain in different ways. Sorry, I got off the mic there for a sec. Um, and uh, you know, this, uh, I, I, this, this Ken Tizard Music for Goat's Glass actually helps me with a lot of my pain management. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I drink a lot of milk in this glass. I love it when it's filled with milk because you see the black. You know, when you've got a shot of whiskey in it, you know, you see the red, but you don't really see the little chickens over here. Um, well, if you do, if, if you fill it up enough. If you fill it up enough, but still it's brown. It doesn't, it doesn't give the black. They used to be a really nice black. They, they fade when you put them in the dishwasher, right? I am pretty happy with these glasses, though, as far as fading glasses go. These are good. Cat, that's the, that's, no, that's the phone stand that's going wiggly, wiggly, wiggly now as you rub your body against it. Fucking weirdo. Uh, we're kind of in Jasper's room. This has been Jasper's room for a long time because it was a storage room for a period of time um, where this room you actually could not get into because it was full of things. Because um, Allison's mom had moved in for a while with everything that she had in her house and it was just kind of like full of stuff. Um, but even when it was full of stuff, the cat lived in here, uh, which was evident every time you went to grab something that you've been looking for for a long time. I've got to find this, this tennis shoe or this leather jacket or this hat. And of course you would find it, you know, and it would have a odor to cat pee in it. Mm, lovely. We've learned, haven't we, Jasper? We don't leave things around for you anymore. No more carpet in the house. Not just Jasper, we've had several cats. Jasper will be our last. I love Jasper. I do, Jasper. I love you so much. Not like dogs. She just turned away from me. You do that with a dog, and it would be all up in your face. Sorry. FMNL into pain free living. One, two, one, two, three. to get stoned, I like to get stoner, <laughs> to get more stoned than I was before, cause I don't have the perfect job I dreamed of, and at times I can take it for a while, then sometimes I take small things for granted, to get high, I like to get high, I like to get more high than I was before, I like to get stoned, I like to get stoned, I like to get more stoned than I was before, cause I don't have a moment of being free living, and at times I can bear it for a while. Sometimes it takes me 
to get more high than I was before. I like to get stoned, I like to get stoner, I like to get more stoned than I was before. To be honest, it's an uphill battle with depression and the drugs the doctor gives me and so tight. There's times when it feels like my skin is crawling and other times bad TV can be alright. I like to get high. to get more high than I was before. I like to get stoned. I like to get stoner. I like to get more stoned than I was There we go. A little song for uh, for Joyce and the gang out in Halifax. Oh yeah, we're gonna get into a little bit of that, eh? Okay. Do we? We're doing this in B or C, C, right? Are we talking about Oh uh, yes. yes. Yes, we do it in C. That's what I thought. Um, surprise. <laughs> We're doing Powderfinger next. Something from the All Together Now album, um, which I, I haven't played a lot of. It's weird. Those were sort of the cover songs that I played forever, and I loved them. And then I made the record, and it was such a great experience, but it was such a, not labor, it was just so many hours, um, you know, recording the song myself and then getting everybody else's contributions, putting them in. Um, and, and I mean, you know, Mike Turner did so many more hours than I did mixing and making everybody sound like we were a band. Um, but of course, I, I overheard, you know, every little portion of the decision making. Um, actually, he was really good at that. He didn't, he didn't really sort of, it wasn't like, you know, check out this new compressor that I'm using. Um, although we had many of those conversations, but, he, you know, it, it wasn't like a a lesson in what he was doing. He just did things and I was like, that's fucking great. And if it was something I heard that I wanted adjusted, he would, we would have a conversation. Um, but he put so much time in on that, it was just great. Uh, this is one of those songs from that record and uh, I haven't done it in a while. We did it the other night and we thought that'll be fun to do. <clears throat> watch again tonight and I can't use my regular watch which is my phone because it's recording up there on camera number whatever that is 909 it's 909 oh perfect time excellent we're just halfway halfway through the set yeah wow sounds like a Beatles song eh? what does one after 909 one after 909 oh yeah you guys don't know well just let me say, when he did the Beatles song last night, that was the tops of the show. Was it really? When he did What Goes On, it just, it brought tears to my eyes. There was, there was, there was several things that he did that were amazing. Yeah. There was the two sort of obvious Ringo songs. like, the, yes, like And they didn't do much for me. Photograph and Octopus's Garden. And well, they were good. They're going to put yeah, in the were, movies and uh, Yellow Submarine. And, yeah. Oh, some of it was brilliant. I mean, you got an amazing band playing those friggin' great songs with a beetle there. With a beetle, like, yeah. Jesus Christ. Did you see the Beatles? No, never. This is my first Beatle ever in person. Wow. Yeah. And you're a massive Beatles fan, oh, yeah. as are you. I'm a big Beatles fan. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever see them? They were before your time? That's correct. Kitty, are you just uh, here to say hi to us? Actually, I first heard about them, I can't remember how or what, but, but my cousin Andrew, who you guys have met, yeah, I know I um, sent me this, you know, pile of clippings, newspaper clippings about this band called the Beatles kind yes. of thing. And that was prior to their, you know, arrival in New York and their, and their stint on the uh, Ed Sullivan show. 
So that was yeah, my first inkling that there was a band out there by that name. Having relatives in England that were interested well, gave yeah. you a, a step up. It did, yeah. yeah. It did, yeah. 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 No, he, no, Andrew's very, very tuned in musically. Absolutely. I have a friend like that, Kenny Butler. Some of you from back home might know Kenny Butler from uh, Ridge Road there, lived next to a Paul Guitard at the Pippi Park, at the Tire Park. When we were a kid, we had a thing called the Tire Park. They built us a playground. How to use tires. It was, it was, uh, it was the Pippi Park, fantastic. the Tire Park. And they had these things, like they had these big tires from like those big sort of like, you know, like Earth 10 movers. foot round type yeah, things. Yeah. And they'd have them buried in the ground. So they'd be sort of sticking out. And as kids, you could kind of go into where the tube would be. And like, you'd hang out there and you'd climb around and get all full of tar and grease. And then they, and then they put in a, uh, a place where we could hang out if it was raining. And it was, um, it was a big culvert tube. You know, those big steel ridge tubes mm -hmm. that are like run under the roads. This one, it had to be about 10 feet high. And again, they stuck half of it in the ground, and the other part came out like this. But it was like razor sharp all along the edge. And we'd climb all over it and constantly be cutting ourselves. And the first time we went down to the tire park. Mommy, um, I think I cut my jugular. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, they, did, they put like a piece of two by four along the very top and kind of drilled through it and put bolts in it to hold right. it in place. But that was just something for us to get up and actually perch on, right? And stop from of sliding course. off. Um, but I remember the very first time I went to Pippi Park, the, uh, the tire park, and um, they had these tires uh, hanging on three chains, much like that lamp there, which you guys can't see at home. But it was like three big chains that came down into a triangle, and it met on the circle of the tire down here. Yep. And you put a kid in each thing, and you'd wind the thing up, and you'd let it go. Anyways, they'd put these two together, and, and it was on this wooden, like the, these wooden beams with a wooden beam across it. And I get in with two people, and there's two people in the other one, and we start spinning. As we're spinning, and I start leaning back, and they hadn't measured the thing right. And Dad jumped in. Had I gone back all the way, I would have taken my head off on the fucking pole, right? A kid leaning back in that, and I would have hit one of the other kids if they leaned back. So that thing got taken down fucking immediately. Mm. Pippi Park, some memories over there, boy. Got beaten up by the by the uh, Brophy Place gang over there, the Drukens. Came down with a baseball bat and need me for beating up one of their. Yeah, right. <laughs> Look out, mama. There's a white boat coming up the river. With a big red beacon and a flag and a man on the rail. I think you better call. Don't look like they're here to deliver the mail Then it's less than a mile away And I hope they didn't come to stay It's got numbers inside And a gun and it's making Out hunting in the mountains. Big John has been drinking since the river took him. And the powers of beer left me here to do the thinking. And I just took.
Shelter me from the power and the finger. I left out of this. I'll come back to it. Cover me with the thoughts that pull the trigger. Think of me as one you never figure. His rifle in my hand felt reassured. Spinal stenosis, hey, Aunt Betty, is that what's going on with you? Oh, no, that's a painful thing. That's a painful thing. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I, my, I'm 53 now, Betty, and my back is, good Lord. I remember Mom always complaining about her back, you know, sort of always lying on the floor or watching TV with her legs, you know, pull up her knees, just sort of watching, just like trying to get her back to straighten out. I got the same thing. And, of course, I treated it badly for a long time as well. So, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, Aunt Betty. That's... Um, that's unfortunate. Uh, hey, Derek Mallard, good to see you. I love the sound, uh, the lighting and everything. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, we're really happy with this. I got a little distracted there because one of the cameras went down, and I immediately saw it, and then I saw Barry jump, and I thought, oh, I better, and then I went, no, I'm in the middle of a song. Barry knows what he's doing. And before I, 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 before I got back to where I was going, he had it fixed again, you know? <clears throat> oh, it's frozen up again, yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, uh, we're going to have to take a look at that phone. This is the third time tonight. That's the third time tonight that one's flying. Okay, yeah. well, that, that's my phone. That's why. All the pornography on it is full of oh, STDs. It yeah, yeah, it's my STD phone. <laughs> to get somebody to, you know, get some ster uh, some antibiotics for that thing. Uh, that's okay. Wonder, uh, okay, so we did. Oh, okay. I, I missed this last week. I wanted to talk about it. Um, I've been doing the gear chats, and I've been, I've been. I got some new stuff from Trainer, you know, the band guitar, which we haven't played yet, have we? We're going to get into that now. Let's do a couple band guitar tunes. Yeah, we'll right. see what's next. We'll get into that. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, we're doing this. Is great. I love what we got left. Uh, so you see us twisting these little things here, these two in your guitar, for those of you who don't know. Neil's got them. Mr. Grant's got a bigger, bigger ones than Neil. 
and um, I've got these ones here. And <laughs> um, a lot of it, you know, you, you fine tune by hand, and when you're when you're tuning, uh, when you're putting on strings, uh, you have like a string winder. That's a thing that clamps around, and, you, and it's still it's like it's a lot of work, but it's a lot better when you're putting on a string to do that. Ernie Ball has this thing called the power peg, um, which. Um, comes in a green and black package. Looks like a water gun. It looks like a water gun. It looks like a bit of a, um, 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 a, a sprinkler head. A, a sprinkler head. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a, it looks like a yeah, That's about the size of it. But yeah, you, you, you put batteries in it. It does not come with batteries. I put batteries in it. And uh, then you press a button and wow, it winds your, your strings. I'm not going to do it now because I'm in tune, but you just Don't put that on the one. I know, yeah. Um, and you can go forward and reverse to tighten, loosen. Uh, and it's a great when you, when, you know, when you're holding that string and you're trying to keep it all in place, especially with these pickups that are a pain to, I figured out a trick. I think I showed you guys last year. But anyways, when you're holding the string and you're trying to get it and twist it, you just put this on and within seconds it's done. Um, it's a great tool. Um, any guitar techs out there or anybody who is working in the field of uh, guitar techs or working shows for people where they might need a string changed or something quickly, these things are, are really, really cool. Um, or if you've got a restring, you know, I know I have some uh, guitar tech friends who have to restring up to 30 guitars a day. Um, 15 maybe. Uh, that's the Newfoundlander in me. But 30 maybe, depending on the show. Yeah, you know, with a couple techs. Anyways, these things can be really handy. Just think if you took the head off that and stuck it in a power drill, you could really, really go at it. <laughs> well, yeah, they, you know, I mean, that, that's been. <laughs> really, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> why is, why are you breaking so many strings? Uh, there are all kinds of different attachments. Yeah. 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 Is no, that's absolutely. Good. Okay, we're going to save the next one for next week, and I'm going to go over to the banjo for a couple tunes to end off here. Um, man, th th again, this fucking little tiny amp sounds so, so good. So we saw Ringo going. Starr last night in his honor. We're not going to do a Beatles tune? Is that the whole thing? Or I thought the Beatles tune Oh, where tune is the Beatles next? tune? I thought it was next. Oh, it's next. Yeah, oh, Jesus. Yeah, no, we're going to do that. Yeah. What are you doing, Neil? You said, why are you saying not to do the Beatles tune, Neil? I don't understand it. You wanted to do this song earlier. Oh, just shut up. <laughs> okay, we're allowed. Sure, you're right. We're allowed to be in 10 minutes when I go to look for it. It'll be exactly where it landed I in know. 10 minutes unless so you pick it up. My memory won't be, uh, well, won't be okay. telling me. I that. actually have one, so. A very long one. again? Yep. Okay, I'll figure out something with that phone there. Uh, obviously, there's an issue somewhere. It might be a memory issue or something else. I don't know. Sometimes these apps get a little weird. Yeah. Could be the case on it is overheating it, too. You can take it out of its case if you want, right? See if that's it. I hadn't thought about that. Next time it goes down. This is a song uh, by the band that we sort of saw last night. Not even close. Um, <laughs> I don't know, was, was last night, like when he was doing the Beatles songs, did it feel like you were seeing the Beatles at all? No, not really. No. No. <laughs> no. Um, but, still. What the heck? Oh, they, they, they it was a terrific amazing. evening. Just yeah, so it, was, terrific. it was brilliant. Yeah, Colin Hay, when he did Overkill, it was just, fuck, it was so awesome. And he sang the high, the high part in uh, Africa. Um, yes. And uh, it was just, uh, hey, Stanley, be careful of all the bits and pieces, buddy. Um, yeah, we are going to do this. <clears throat> one, two, one, two. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you tomorrow. I'll miss you, but maybe I'll always be true.
close your eyes and I'll kiss you tomorrow I'll miss you and I'll remember I'll always be true Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, that's a pretty cool tune to play, actually. I love, I love the way. Uh, you know something? I really enjoyed learning that tune. Yeah. Um, it was a real an inspiration for me, and it was a. Um, well, we'll send that out to Paul then, wherever he is tonight. Absolutely. So he hasn't Paul. got mentioned tonight. He hasn't got mentioned. Okay, true. <laughs> Sir Paul. We haven't mentioned George, have we? He's out there doing a tour, I believe. Is he? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think so. Well, Art news? I think so. Quite possible. Uh, Quite possible. I'm not really connected, so <laughs> I just hear rumors. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna do a song now by the Ramones, um, and uh, I thought I'd try it on the banjo. I've been having fun playing this little thing recently. Um, I don't have a strap for it yet. I was supposed to remind Neil, but I didn't. You're supposed to what? I was supposed to remind Neil because you have a banjo strap at home, but I forgot to remind you. Yeah, well, I decided I'm going to keep mine. Are you going to keep your banjo strap? No. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll get my own. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for helping out. No problem. What does it look like? Um, it's like, you know, two or three inches wide. Are they? Though? I thought they were more like stringy and, and, and tiny, and they the had other twine. string. Yeah, that's what you mean. So the other twine. That's but what I thought. You know, they were. Actually, actually, all you need to do is take the guitar strap and put a shoelace on each end of it, and then thread well, the That's what I was going to do. I was going to do, and you said, "I got one at home. Remind me, I'll bring it to you." Yeah. Now, now you're being all mean. So. <laughs> I decided not to give it to you. Decided not to give it to you. Okay, well, <laughs> I. I just understand. Whenever I give you stuff, it just disappears forever. I understand. I kind of like my banjo straps. I know, I know. <laughs> so you can't help. I know. Here he goes. He's, he's actually being so honest with us now. There's something that he's giving me that I've recently lost, and I won't know until he tells me like a week from now. No, my guitar stands? Or? Your guitar stands? Yeah. I know. I don't know where they are. I, I did lose them. You lost them. I know. I lost them. Because yeah. I said, can you watch these? Sure. You and did. I said, can you remember when we leave? Sure we have to get them. these. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 no. Blame it on me. It's always my fault. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a couple more tunes. It's a little bit of late night Truth tonight. Truth of the matter is, ladies and he's my best friend and I love him dearly. Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Allison giggling in the other room. <laughs> um, oh, I have something for this right now. Hi, Stan. How you doing, buddy? Hi. How are you? You got kisses for me? No, probably not, eh? You just said, I see that you're about to hang some lyrics. I thought I'd come in and see if I can get in the way. But no, he's perfect there. That's a great spot for him. I love him. Seven. 
escape Bullets and fangs that clicking up bones Spirits moan along the tender stones And at night when the moon is bright Someone cries something ain't right fun. Olé. We got one more song for you ladies and gentlemen. You know I was thinking about sort of what me and Allison have been talking a lot about what this show means and, and why we're doing it and you know why you know this it's it's uh, why at this point in my life am I not you know why is this what I'm doing and and, the, and there's a lot of reasons for it and the one thing that, that really keeps coming home with all of our conversations mm, is whiskey. whiskey. The whiskey <laughs> and the weed. Um, Can't tell in that last song, yeah. especially <laughs> the ending. Oh, it's the whiskey. <laughs> it's the whi- absolutely, absolutely. Um, I've enjoyed this casual setting of doing whis- whiskey Wednesdays that we did for years at the pub, um, and it was very similar to this. I mean, there was nights it was just Megan behind the bar, which is like Barry, you know. It's just, it feels like the pub on a on a cold winter night. They do look a lot alike. And they, it's about the size of this room, so you know. I mean, welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Megan will never talk to me again. <laughs> But authenticity keeps coming up. It's a really important thing, and um, and I don't know why I was talking about it. Um, it was leading me somewhere, and I got lost. Uh, you know, that happens. Um, maybe I'll get to it another time. But uh, we're going to do a song by... A song. I don't know who wrote the first song, Stranger. I think it's just a folk traditional, and I, don't, I think it's probably unknown. Because I've seen, I've seen <clears throat> recordings of other bands doing it, and it just says folk traditional, so... First cousin of Anon. Anon. D, I think. The um, Whiskey Wednesday tip jar is there. Um, it was there at the end of. So you can't hear a thing I'm saying. Uh, it was there at the beginning, and let me see if it still does that. Why doesn't. I never understand why copy doesn't stay I find it to be a very weird thing wow um, talk about Stan hi Stan you just lost the camera there I'm afraid no no it's okay it's okay we're done with that one <laughs> okay too much trouble maybe so oh no there we go it says it's copied now I, I should be more on top of the the donate thing I know it's probably the most important thing I do <laughs> uh, as you can tell by my uh, um, I've gone through all of this technical stuff. I went through this crazy technical stuff that you guys see for me to like broadcast to you. When it comes to me asking you for money, it's like, how do I copy and paste? Fuck. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see if this does it. Boom. 
Excellent. Okay. It's been great to see you all. We've had a wonderful Whiskey Wednesday. Neil, how are you doing tonight? You're great. doing great, man. Absolutely fine. Yeah, you're feeling good. It's nice to see you smile and laugh. You had a few couple days where, where you where you ate silently and 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 kind of sat by yourself and you were deep in thought. I know. It's nice to see you coming out of it. Um, we all go through it, you know. We all have stuff to deal with in life. And Barry, it's great to have you here tonight. Um, I'm again. My condolences to the family. Uh, I think I speak for all of us when I say that. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry they're going through it, and and the way that it happened. Uh, I won't get into the details, but you know, unfortunate realities of things. Yeah. Um, and uh, we send our send our love down to Joyce and the family tonight. Appreciate it. Oh, without a doubt, my friend. through your town I was a stranger passing through your town Well I asked you for a faithful
fun tonight oh what a great time i had did you have a good time neil always barry you had yourself a good time as yeah, best as can day. be uh mr grant yourself i'm hoping everybody out there had a fantastic time still working after 13 years on a way to end whiskey wednesday and I'm, I'm thinking it's sort of something you know it has to do with you know be kind treat people with kindness that's already been said so much now maybe there's a reason to keep saying it but. can't be said enough yeah I think, you know, if you're kind, just be yourself, you know? That's the important thing. Being yourself is really important, and I think that kindness can come from that. Too many of us are trying to be something else. Musicians, you know, you spend a long time trying to sound like somebody. They already sound like that, you know? It's kind of, it's, be yourself, be happy, be happy with who you are. I don't know, these are all just thoughts that I have on a Wednesday night. I hope you're all doing fantastic. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Thank you, Barry. Again, condolences to um, everybody down in Halifax. And uh, thanks to Allison for putting up with me, uh, having to put all this stuff together in here. And thanks again. Big thanks. Big shout out to Kevin Snow at um, uh, Canada. Uh, AV Canada. Um, awesome, awesome online sure, store. Buddy. And there is a physical presence. And if you call him, I had so many questions, and he just answered all of them, and he got my business because of it. Great guy, really big, really nice, helpful. So thank you all very much, Whiskey Wednesday audience. We will see you next week. Um, please be careful. Until then, cheers. Once again, thanks for spending another Wednesday with us here at Storyhouse Studios. Thanks to Trainer, Yorkville, and the Long Tooth Beverage Company for being a part of the show. We love our time on the Whiskey Wednesday show and appreciate all of your support. Don't forget to hit up the tip jar if you feel so inclined. Never expected, but always appreciated. Tune in every week for more guests, songs, stories, drinks, and gear talk. And don't forget to visit the website, www.kentizzard.com, to sign up for the Whiskey Wednesday wrap-up. Compiled by Allison, this is a monthly overview with highlights, directories of songs, and so much more. Be kind, be helpful, be happy, be safe. See you next week. The seal on a Jim Beam Cannon.